Hello! Aren't you excited? Today is your first day of algebra. I know you should be excited. I doubt that you are, but you should be. So, today we need to start by discussing some vocabulary. I know you really don't want to because you think this is math. We should be doing math. However, these are some words that come up quite a bit. I need to make sure that you understand what they mean. So first we're going to talk about an expression. An expression is very simple. It's just a mathematical statement. This statement could be as simple as 2 or it could be as complex as 5x plus 9 plus 3y plus 2xy minus 6. All of that was an expression. All it's got is just numbers and letters in it, nothing fancy to it. An equation is an expression that has an equal sign in it. So if there is an equal sign, that makes it an equation. If there is no equal sign, that makes it an expression. It's okay for expressions to have pluses and minuses in them, but you need to make sure that there is no equal sign if you're going to call it an expression. Otherwise, it's an equation. We evaluate expressions and we can simplify expressions. We cannot solve expressions. We have to solve equations. There's a difference. The reason why is when you solve something, you end up with an equal sign in your answer. That's because there was an equal sign in the equation. No equal sign in the equation means you can't have an equal sign in your answer. So, evaluating is when you come down to a one number answer. It doesn't matter how many letters were in the problem, there better not be any in your answer. It doesn't matter how many numbers or powers or exponents or um, variables were in the problem, there better not be any of those in your answer. All you get is one number to be your answer. It can be as big as you want it to be, but it can only be one number. Whenever you solve, you're finding out what the unknown value is. And so an example would be your answer would look like x equals a number because that number is our unknown value, where x is our variable. A variable is a letter that represents an unknown value. It can be any letter. It could be x, it could be y, it could be a for a hava, it could be i for Isaac, although they really won't use i's because i's mean something else in math. A's kind of sort of mean something else sometimes. So they're not used quite as often, but x and y, tons. Coefficient is any number that's in front of the variable. So if my mathematical statement was 2x plus 3y, 2 is my coefficient to x, which is a variable, and 3 is my coefficient to y, which is a variable. So you can have both coefficients and variables in the same expression, and that's a mathematical expression. It's not an equation because there is no equal sign in it. We good so far? Okay. Now we have understood in the past, Isaac was part of this, but we have understood in the past that if it's important enough for me to write down up here, that means it's important enough for you to write down there. So you're going to need to take some time and make sure you write down all of these things and what they are. That'll help you remember them for later because you're really going to see them a lot. They're used a lot in directions. While you're at it, go ahead and write down the stuff that's in black too. The stuff that's in black are key words you need to know. Now, Chances are you already know most of these words, if not all of them, because you're just that brilliant. However, write them down anyway. It'll make me feel better. Okay, I'm going to let you have some time to do that. Hit pause so that you can. And when you're done doing that, you can come back and hit play, and we'll move on to the next part. Okay. So I'm guessing that you're done by now, so I can go ahead and erase all of this. But before I erase that, I want to talk about it some more. Some of these key words that are used to mean certain things show up a lot, and they have a very specific quality to them. 
So I'm going to go ahead and underline some of those key words so that you can understand that later on we're going to talk about that very specific quality. Not right now, but later on. But before we get to the later on part, I want you to go ahead and have them underlined. So you know that something important is going to happen with them. So one of those key phrases is subtracted from, and one of them is less than, and one of them is divided by. Three of them, just for you. Now when we're talking about these words, notice I only have two of them up there for multiply. That seems kind of sparse, doesn't it? There are only two up there for multiply right now. It doesn't mean that we're not going to add more later. Same thing for division. These are the ones I could think of right away. You might be able to think of more, and I'm sure more are going to come up while we're going through this process. But they're going to ask you to translate, and whenever they say the word translate, That means you're going from an algebraic expression, something that has letters in it. No. Rewind. That means you're going from words to an algebraic expression, or you're going from an algebraic expression to words. It depends on whether they're asking you to translate it into words or translate it into an algebraic expression. If they give you some words like this, and they want you to translate it into an algebraic expression, then you have to know what you're going to be doing for those. Likewise, if they give you an addition sign, you have to know that can mean any of those things over there. So we'll practice some with that in the future as well. I just need to give you a little broad spectrum for that right now. Let's talk about the first section. Oh, one more thing we need to cover because we are now in algebra and we are no longer in pre-algebra and we are no longer in elementary school math. We are now in algebra. There are a couple of things that are different between algebra and all those other kinds of maths you've done in the past. Some of this you may know, some of this you may not. When you have letters that are side by side, Like if I were to have AB, that doesn't mean AB is an AB. You don't put them together like that. That means A times B. We don't always write the little multiplication sign. Sorry, we don't always write the little multiplication sign. Sometimes it's in there, sometimes it's not. Something else that means A times B is A with a little dot and a B. That's A times B. Just like parentheses mean to multiply. When you have parentheses that are side by side with nothing else between them, that means to multiply. Anytime they're side by side with nothing else between them, that means that you multiply them together. What you will not see anymore is AXB. That is not how we say A times B anymore. No longer will you use this. You are now up to this stuff. Something else we need to talk about. When we're talking about fractions, and you get answers, we like improper fractions. So if you get an answer like 11 over 6, I would want you to leave it like 11 over 6. We no longer have to worry about, I shouldn't say that it's not equal to, we no longer have to change it to 1 and 5 over 6. 
We can, but we don't have to. We choose to leave it this way because if we leave it this way, it makes our calculations a lot easier later on because usually you're going to do something more with it. And when we're ready to do that something more, it's already in the form that it needs to be in. So we talked about how multiplying is different in algebra and we talked about how fractions look different in algebra. How you don't have to change them to a mixed number. Now it doesn't mean they're not going to give you mixed number problems. They are tons of them. It doesn't mean that you're not going to see fractions anymore. You will. Tons of them. However, you need to keep in mind that this is good and this is good. I would still take this on a test. But this is more helpful and this is how I'll tend to leave it because I know what's coming up next. This is normally when I would ask if there were any questions, but it's kind of hard for you to give me any questions being I can't hear you. Even if you shout, I can't hear you. So instead, I'm just going to erase the board. I should probably tell you a great story now. I don't really have one, I'm sorry. I'll have to work on that for next time. Great story. Mm, I don't know, I have to come up with one. Let's start with looking at page, but well, you don't have to know what page it is yet. We're gonna talk about evaluating some expressions. They want us to evaluate when x is equal to 3 over 4. Told you we were going to have fractions. y is equal to 28. And z is equal to 3 over 7. The first thing they want us to evaluate, example 1. I'll be nice. The first thing they want us to evaluate is x, y, z. Now we just talked about how when they're side by side, that means that they mean to multiply them together. So that means that I'm going to rewrite it using my numbers instead of my letters. So in place of x, I write 3 over 4. And in place of y, I write 28, and in place of z, I write 3 over 7. Now that I've got the problem, all I have to do is multiply it out. What do I do with the 28, though? Because that's not a fraction. I have to change it to a fraction. How do I change it to a fraction? Oh, yeah, I put a 1 underneath it. Whenever I have a whole number and I need to make it a fraction, I just stick a 1 up underneath it, and now it's a fraction. Rules for multiplication say you multiply straight across the top, and you multiply straight across the bottom. Problem is, those are some really big numbers. I seem to remember that if you had a number on top that could cancel out with a number on the bottom, you could go ahead and do that. So I could say 4 goes into 4 one time, and 4 goes into 28 seven times. And then I could say 7 goes into 7 one time, and 7 goes into that 7 one time. As long as there's something on top canceling out with something on bottom, we should be fine. So now I get to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So 3 times 1, because I can't forget about it, times 3 is 9. And 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Now we had this whole conversation about how improper fractions are good. But that can actually be reduced down to a whole number. And if that's possible, you need to go ahead and do it. So 1 goes into 9, 9 times. Now I don't know if you've noticed or not, but whenever I get an answer, I always put a box around it. I put the box around it so I know what my answer is. 
that's going to make things go a lot faster for you and a lot faster for me and a lot faster for your mommy. The reason is all three of us are going to be checking work and we want to check it as fast as possible because we don't want to spend a lot of time trying to check our work. So if you can find the answer quickly then you should go ahead and do it that way. It's easier if you box your answers and circle your numbers. That's what I do. So for example two none they want you to evaluate three parentheses y minus 7 we still have our y is equal to 28 our z is equal to 3 over 7 and our x is equal to 3 over 4 so before I go through to evaluate this, I need to replace what's there. So my 3 can stay a 3. My y will become a 28 minus 7. So I hope you remember the order of operations from your pre-algebra. 28 minus 7 you have to do first because it's in parentheses. So that'll be 3 times 28 minus 7 is 21. And then 3 times 21, because parentheses mean to multiply, gives you 63 for your answer. And then for example number 4, They want us to evaluate 2 over 3, parentheses, y minus 4. I'm going to let you take just a few seconds and try that one by yourself. Go ahead and press pause and let's see how far you can get. When you've gotten as far as you know how to get, then you can press play again. Okay? So let's see if you did it right. 2 over 3 parentheses, my y is really 28 minus 4. 28 minus 4 has to be done first because it's in parentheses and that gives me 24. And then 2 over 3 times 24. Whenever you're multiplying a fraction times a whole number, you multiply times the top and divide by the bottom. So 2 times 24 is 48 divided by 3 is 16. You could have done it the other way around. You could have done your dividing first and then your multiplying. 3 goes into 24 8 times, and 8 times 2 is still 16. So you're going to get the 16 either way. As long as you multiply by the top number and divide by the bottom number, you'll be fine. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but something else just happened in algebra that you didn't do before. And it's the fact that we always work down. We don't work out to the side. The only time we work out to the side is when we're dealing with big fractions like this. When we work down is so we can show each individual step. Now I know how smart you are and I know you don't have to show every individual step but you really should because otherwise you'll never know where you make your mistakes when you start making mistakes. So you need to get in the habit of showing every individual step, especially on the easy problems when you don't think you need to because it's on those problems that you learn the procedure and then when you get to the harder problems, you already know the procedure. You don't have to try to learn on the hard problems because that's really hard to do. It's easier to learn on the easy problems and then when you get to the hard problems, you'll be fine. 
So, speaking of hard problems, let's try one that's a bit more difficult. Example number four. That is xy minus 14 over z. We haven't had one that difficult before. But I'm going to go ahead and replace everything in the hopes that it works out the way that it did before. I'm starting to run out of room over there, so I'm going to write it down here. X is really 3 over 4. Y is really 28. And we said when they're side by side, it means that we multiply them. Minus 14 is a 14. And then we got a big fraction bar. And I put 3 over 7 underneath it. That's a lot of stuff. Have to take it bit by bit. So on top, when I go to reduce it, I'm going to have 28 over 1. That's what we said we do with whole numbers when we need them to be fractions. And then I can kind of cancel stuff right here and say 4 goes into 4 one time. And 4 goes into 28 seven times. So I can multiply on top now and get 3 times 7 is 21. But I don't have any place to write it over here. So I'm going to go over here and say 21 minus 14 is what I have left on top. And then 3 over 7 is what I have on bottom. 21 minus 14 we can do. That's 7. So that gives me 7 over 3 over 7. This fraction bar, that means we have to divide, which means we're now dividing fractions. That's a lot of stuff. So now I have 7 divided by 3 over 7. I need this to be a fraction, so I've got to stick a 1 underneath it. So that'll become 7 over 1. And instead of division, whenever you divide fractions, you really flip over the second one and multiply. So I'm going to put times 7 over 3. Okay. 7 times 7 is 49. And 1 times 3 is 3. 3 doesn't go into 49 evenly, and there's nothing that will make that reduce. So that's our answer. I don't have to change it to a mixed number. It's the way it's supposed to be. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, that was really kind of difficult, Aunt Jo, and I don't really kind of like that one. That's okay. We're going to let you work up to it. Speaking of working up to it, your mom was given a whole bunch of stuff that you won't have access to. She was given this stuff because she knew, well, I knew what was going to happen. I knew that after I show you something like this, I need to have you practice it. And I need to know that you've gotten it right before you go and try to do your homework. So what I want you to do is to practice on some of these problems. So if you turn to page 5 of your lovely algebra book, I like your algebra book. If you turn to page 5 of your algebra book, you'll see where it says practice exercises. I want you to do numbers 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, 20, 22, 30, and 38. It's not that many. Just nine. You can do that. 
do these nine, and then when you're done, you take them to your mom. And you let her see them. And she will grade them, because I've already worked them out for her. So she'll be able to see. That's why you've got to make sure you box your answers. She'll be able to see problem number two, see what you have for it, and see what I have for it. And if you didn't get it right, then it's already worked out for her so she can help you get it right. That way we can make sure you understand these before you get to your homework. Now I know you're wondering, wait a minute, what's my homework? You mean there's more I have to do? There sure is. You have homework. Once you've gotten these problems correct and you understand these problems, then your homework will be a piece of cake. This is what your homework is. Now, here's the thing about your homework. All of your homework problems are odd. You don't have any even problems. I don't want you to do even problems for homework. Just like your mom has to check these for me to make sure you're doing them right, I need you to check these. Not her, you. You're the one that checks this homework to see if it's right or not. If it's wrong, then you know you need to get some help. If it's okay, then you're fine. But you need to do your homework and you need to be the one to check it so you know whether or not you have a question. Now let's talk about this I have a question thing. If you have a question, there are a couple of things you can do. Number one, you could email me. That would be fine. Number two, you could have your mom text me and I could answer her through text. Number three, you could ask your mom. She probably knows. She probably will for quite some time now. She's actually pretty good at math whether she wants to admit it or not. You could call me and I can try to help you over the phone. But we need to make sure that you understand all this stuff before you start on your work tomorrow because tomorrow we're just going to add on more stuff. It's just going to start to get harder. So make sure that you do your homework tonight and make sure that you've gotten them correct. I had a student one time who used to highlight her answers once she checked them so that she knew that they were right. You can do that if you want. It would be an excuse for you to play with a highlighter. And who doesn't want to play with a highlighter? I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a lovely evening.